My name is Ebenezer Amwako Entry, and you are so welcome to this YouTube channel. On this YouTube channel, you are going to get videos that will set you up in your work with God and also with your prayer life. On this channel, you upload videos consistently to make sure that believers are guided to pray and pray and pray. If you are new to this YouTube channel, make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that when we upload new videos, you can have access to them. And also, if you don't understand anything, kindly send us a message and we will get back to you. Also, make sure that this video you are about to watch, you will like the video, try and comment on it. And when you are blessed by the video, make sure that you share it to someone. Thank you.
situations around his life. Because that's the only way you can make the most out of it. Because if you don't understand the dimensions of the operations of God around the man's life, you will miss the most strategic moment of the season. The most strategic. The words that I'll be speaking to you tonight, they will come with them the power, the life, and the glory of God. The, 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 the essence of this word is not just to educate you. It's designed to carry you into a realm where the life that powers the utterance are domiciled. So that everyone that makes contact with those words by the sound, by the spirit of the word, you will be carried into the realm. You know the Bible says, why John was in the Isle of Patmos, he heard a sound behind him as of a trumpet. And as he turned to look, he was carried into the realm where the sound came from. That is the mystery of sound. Sounds are intelligent forces. Sounds are energy vibrators that comes with the life and the energy of the spirit from whence they are orchestrated. When you interact and simulate with sound, something happens. In physics, it is called resonance. What happens is that you synchronize with the frequency of the sound and then you are carried into the realm of the operation of that sound. John was in the Isle of Patmos. He was given up, lost out of civilization, left for death. But when he heard the sound, something happened. He was carried into the realm. And the first thing he saw was the Christ. A man that civilization had rejected. He was cast away into the eyes of Patmos. The only destiny that was left for him in the Isle of Patmos was death. A slow kind of death. Because church history made us understand that they tied him to a chariot. They drew him around the city. He could not die. They threw him into boiling oil. He could not die. So the intelligence that was behind, they cast it away into the Isle of Patmos to separate him from civilization. So that he would die slowly in hunger, in pain and in penury. But while he was in the Isle of Patmos, he said, I was in the spirit. The man understood the technology of life. It didn't matter what was happening around him. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And the only way that heaven could extend an invitation to him was through a sound. He heard a sound as of a mighty trumpet. And he was carried. Suddenly, even the very writings of John, he said, anyone that reads this writing is blessed. Because he was talking from heaven. He was talking from heaven. I was among the captives by the river Kappa and I saw vis- I saw visions of God he was a priest but he was sentenced into captivity as a prisoner but while he was there he was not conscious about his circumstance these are men that understood that life comes only from the regions of the spirit until a man travels into the crucible of life everything he does in time is a waste and that is why men who have journeyed through these waters, nothing shakes them. You can't break their spirit. He was among the captives. He was sentenced a prisoner. But right there in captivity, he saw visions of God. And he said, as he spoke to me, the spirit entered into me and carried me to my feet. What you need to carry you is to hear the whispers of heaven. Is to hear the whispers from Zion. 
Your circumstance will not move. Your mountains will remain. Because the mountains only skip like rams when they come before the presence of the monarch of Zion. That's why we labor in the place of prayer. That's why we travail. That's why we worship. That by all means we may be carried. We may be carried. He said, know with this first. You cannot join in the spirit. He said, you must know this first. He said, no prophecy of the scripture. It's of individual interpretation. He said, holy men of God, they spake as they were carried by the spirit of God. What made them who they were was the ability to be carried by the spirit of God. Holy men of God, they spake as they were carried. There are people talking on earth. You can't shake anything because there are demons who are enthroned over the constellation. They are wielders of powers in darkness. Until you are carried, you are carried. That's where your journey began. Holy men, they were they spake, they spake as they were carried. As they were carried. There's a transport system in the spirit. But it's for them who can find it. It's called the path of life. That's why not many are mighty. Only few understand the technology of spirit life. There are many people laboring in hard work. Hard work doesn't make men. It is secret, secrets, apprehension, apprehension of mysteries that makes men partnership with spirits. That's what makes a difference. Oh, listen, 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 let me tell you something. You see, sometimes when I look at some Christians, I begin to weep. It's amazing how the presence of God can be tangible in a place and somebody is not moved. You know why? He's rusty in the spirit. He's decaying, he's decaying. He cannot perceive. You know, Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot perceive the kingdom. There are some people that have become rusty. They can't perceive the presence anymore. They, can't, they are rusty. That's why Judas could live with Jesus for three and a half years with the mighty works, with the wonders. The only thing that was in his head was how to sell and to betray Jesus. How could he think that way? How was it possible for him to think like that? He was rusty. So he was separated from the realm. There are some persons that can never be moved because the God of this world has blinded their hearts. When you come to the presence and you are not spared, you cry and ask for help. You ask for mercy. You ask for mercy. If God does not make sense to you anymore, you are lost. You are lost. You are dead. You are condemned already. Jesus said, they that believe, he said they have passed from death to life. He didn't say they will pass. They have passed. They are living in a realm. This person I see, as you are walking, as you are walking, there's a mighty angel walking with you. You hear his foot. Listen, I'm not prophesying. I'm telling you about the reality of somebody here. As you walk, you hear the footsteps of somebody walking behind you. But you have never seen him. It is the angel the Lord has sent to walk with you. But you don't understand the secret and the protocol of partnership with the angelic. And even most times when you walk in dark places, you are afraid because the step become audible sometimes and you are afraid and you run away the Lord wants to select those people he wants to show you how that alignment pattern is established who is it? who are they who? Hey, they are even more than three just lift your hands you don't need to come out where you are God will touch you it's not by power it's not by might it's by the spirit it's by the spirit it's by the spirit it's by the spirit and so precious spirit of the living God Everyone that is in that category that you want to anoint tonight to secure alignment, to secure alignment, to secure alignment, to secure alignment. Father, touch them now. Touch them now. Touch them now. Touch them now. Help her, help her, help her. Touch them, touch them, touch them. Touch them, touch them. I activate the alignment pattern. I activate the alignment pattern in the spirit. I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. I activate it. Let there be synchronization. Even right now. Even right now. Holy Ghost. Help them. Help them. Help them. 
All the young ladies, listen, listen. The woman is a mystery. The womb of the woman is a gate into the spirit. It is only through the womb of a woman that life can come into it. That is why every time the power of God is moving, it looks as if it's only ladies that are responding. Because by their configuration, they are connectors to the spirit realm. So it's easier for them to access dimensions. There's a dimension of the spirit that is about to be better through the umbilical cords of women here now. I am seeing the oppression of the marine. And the oppression of the marine comes in order to corrupt the prophetic movement and the prophetic heritage of a territory. And it's coming through that cord, that gate. We want to shut it down now. I'm seeing many, many young ladies here that have seen themselves crowned, crowned in their dreams, in their spirit. Some of you, you have become, every night is like a sex spree. Your womb has become a gate that opens up the territory to all kinds of marine oppression, serpentine oppression. I want to disconnect that gate so that you can become a conduit pipe through which the Holy Ghost can ride into this territory. Can you place your hands there now? Can you place your hands there now? Shaka Patakabash Jezeveleske Bretenashka Oshas, get ready. Obesa Tobera Sikua Baris Kabates, 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 Holy Ghost Mesoto Kaparabadas Sika Patea, Sika Patea. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I break that connection now. I break that connection. I shut that gate to the demonic. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. Separate them. Let the fire come upon them. And God with fire. And God help her. Help her. And God with fire. And God with fire. Let the fire begin to burn. Let it begin to burn. Let it begin to burn. Holy Ghost. Rapa <laughs> the word of the Lord. But this is the last thing I want to do. I'm seeing young men that have lost scepters. You have lost mantles. Particularly there's somebody here. One of the generals of God currently in this in, in Nigeria now met with you in the dream and he gave you something that looked like an iPad. And somehow you gave it to somebody to hold for you. And then when you came to receive it back, it was something else. It's symbolic. I'm seeing young men that have lost mantles. Mantles in the spirit. Some of you have lost it through carelessness. There is a cloud of mercy. There's a cloud of mercy that is coming to this place now to restore, to restore, to restore, to restore. Lost mantles. Lost mantles. Lost mantles. 
Ezai Tabaru Sekobea Bawua Liku Zatapa Baraka Basto Entoria Barabenos Jatabala Testabanas Rekapate Holy Ghost Restore 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 Help him Help him I don't want people to enjoy. Help them, help them, help them. Holy Ghost, restore, restore. From my left hand side, to my right hand side, from the front to the back. Holy Ghost, move over there. Let the mantles be restored. Let the mantles be restored. Let it come upon you like a garment of fire. 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 Help them. Help those under the anointing. Let it come upon you. Like a garment. Like a garment of fire. Like a garment of fire. Like a garment of fire. Let it descend upon you. Like a garment of fire. Let the mantles rest. Let the mantles rest. Let the mantles rest. Let the mantles rest. Let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon you. Let it rest upon you. Let it rest. Let it rest upon you. But I'm not saying it for you to believe. I'm telling you what I'm telling you what I've, I've seen because I've gone ahead of the service. Some of you, your eyes will open. You will begin to see into the spirit. Some of you, the causes that have tied people down in your family, suddenly you begin to have understanding. Not just about the mystery that is at work in your family, but you will know what you will do to undo those negative mysteries. You will know it. It will just come upon you. A knowing will descend upon you. Some of you, as the ministration is going on, sicknesses will leave your body. You will notice weights will jump out of people. Addictions will break off the life of people. Some of you, you will literally begin to sense the anointing in a tangible fashion. Your hands will begin to burn. Your legs will begin to eat you. We eat you. Your legs will eat you literally. Some of you will take off your shoes because your legs literally will eat you. Because the Lord will be dispensing spiritual varieties. Varieties. There will be dispensations. Dispensing of giftings, of graces. By the hand of God. Because this season is a strategic prophetic season for a move to begin in this land. And God has brought you here because you are supposed to be heralds, heralds of this movement. Sakabatabash. There's a young man here. Listen. There's a young man here. You are about 23 years old. About 23 years old, you are fair in complexion, a bit slim. The Lord, I've told you, is sending you out as an evangelist. Listen, you have seen several visions of yourself, and you find yourself ministering to a large crowd of people. You have seen it several times, but there is fear in your heart. You don't know how you are going to begin it. In fact, there was a time you asked yourself, What will I even give? What name will I give to this kind of ministry? There have been this trouble in your heart. And the Holy Ghost have been persuading, persuading, persuading. Are you the one? How old are you? You are 23. You've seen these visions before. You have been asking yourself, how will it happen? And fear has been in your heart. In fact, there was a time you were trying to say, what would be the name of this ministry? And you thought in your head, but you couldn't find a name. But the Lord will have me let you know that it's not by power. It's not by might. You have had... Yes, sir. Today I did that. <laughs> Very... The Lord will have me tell you it's not by power. It's not by might. It's by the spirit of the living God. Can you lift your hands toward heaven? The angel of the Lord will touch you. The hand of God will come upon you. And as you are slain, you begin to receive instructions. Instructions about the ministry that the Lord has put in your hand. Because I've seen signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. Signs and wonders. I've seen power, power, power erupting from your vessel to cast out demons. To cast out demons by the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. By the Holy Ghost. You ready, you ready, you ready.
of what I've said now, I'm seeing that there are other three other young ladies. In fact, one of you, God, have told you you marry a pastor. And a prophet has even confirmed it. But you see, it has been a challenge. It has been a struggle. The hand of God. The hand of God. The hand of God. Okay, let me even give you the opportunity. Come, so that you'll be willing. Do it willingly. Do it willingly. I don't want the Holy Ghost to compare. I don't want the Holy Ghost to compare. Okay, you are the young lady, the fair young lady from Otuko. You are from Penway State. You are from Otuko. You are the young lady. The hand of God will apprehend you. You can't run again. Today is the day. As I see you, I hear the name Mata. Mata. And the Lord tells me, what He tells you is tells is telling matter. Because you are tied to matter. You are connected to matter. Who is matter? destiny is tied to her. It's the same instruction God is giving you, is giving matter. So, what will happen to you now, will happen to matter. He has been revealing it to me in several occasions, but I've been ignoring it. What has the Lord been revealing to you? That I will marry a pastor. Okay. Which of you has a prophet confirmed? A prophet. A prophet confirmed to you. You are the one. The prophet told you that you can't escape it. This is what the Lord has said. That you that's where you will end. There's no need struggling. You know why? What is summoning you is the hand of an immortal being. You don't fight them. When Saul was Saul, Saul was persecuting the church, and Jesus says, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? He said it is hard to kick against the barbed wire. The things you want to fight against, they were established, perfected in God before the foundations of the world. You were brought into an equation. It has an immortal scope. What God is calling you into, it was we from the foundation of the world. Your life is not sufficient to kick against it. You can't fight it. It's a mortars. When they summon, we only obey. 
Because it's by power, the powers that fashion the foundations of creation. No man has the capacity to fight it. Not one of us. Oh, your host king. Kado, Kado. You are mighty on your own. You reign, you reign, you reign. Oh, well, 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 Zebele kumara zapero, malakumbre skevata boria, raamda para isko para gavata kuata. Oma lekaya pahuata. Shehuri, hey, you are God, you are mighty on. You are, you are, you are. Hey, akaka pa 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 boata ayatamo. Oma la takome. Ezo prene tali kazura hababata Owa hababanas Listen, listen, listen We have not started the service The angels of God are already healing people As I speak to you Pain, pain has just left somebody's back region You are feeling some pain You lift your hand, you feel pain Pain has just left It just lifted It just lifted Check yourself See, the presence of God is the region of Assortment of possibilities because his presence is the full weight of his reality. The word presence is the word doxa. It means the full composition of a reality. In Hebrew it's called kapoid. When he manifests, anything is possible. That's what they call the Shekinah glory. When he invades a place, he begins to swallow your insufficiencies. You read, you read, you read. Check oh, yourself, check yourself. If you are the youth, come. If you are the youth, come. Check. Power of God. I activate you. Share on the
creatures are just an excuse of heaven to invade the earth realm. What God wants to do, He has preordained it. We are just the excuse God will use to invade. So while the teaching is going on, the Holy Ghost will be ministering. I'll just teach for 20 minutes and then I will come back to this realm and continue because there are lots of giftings that will be dispatched from heaven tonight. See, some of you, you are here. You don't even, you don't even have any business with spiritual things. In fact, when you come to church, you want to see what, you have, what is happening. What are they talking about? The power of God will arrest you today. <laughs> you will see macho men. Watch. You will see macho men, macho men go under the power today. The people that these church people, all these ones that call us church people, today they will be ordained. Into the Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. We give you praise, we give you glory. In Jesus' precious name. He wants to pray. I heard Ben Him say the story, I was amazed. He went to Catherine Kuma's meeting and he saw the power of God. And then he came back and said, Well, Holy Spirit, what they said, if it's true, prove it to me. And he was there waiting on the Holy Ghost. If the Holy Ghost had not proven himself to him, he wouldn't have entered into ministry. So when Benihim stands before the sick man, he's not trying to believe. He believed before he started. But you, you just came to a place and they motivated you that preachers are respected or you just saw a preacher that you liked and then you went to the place of prayer and then you began to pray, hoping that you will become a preacher. No. You were a preacher before you were born. So your journey needs to begin from understanding of truth so that by truth conviction will be furnished. And when conviction is furnished, you begin to walk with confidence. Your assurance will not be in things. It will be in God. I've preached to white guys before. They say, well, what you are saying, if you believe it, prove it. Well, um, my hand, I have something on my hand. There's a growth on my hand. It has been there for five years. If healing is true, pray, let the growth go. And God is not against it. Because God called us to be witnesses unto him. What it means is that you and I are supposed to be the proof that God is real. So we are first of all called to prove the existence and the validity of the truth of God. Our life is supposed to be a statement of the veracity of the word of God. If the word of God is true, we are supposed to prove it. So when you come to talk to somebody about the Holy Spirit, we are not expected to coerce the person. You are expected to demonstrate the truth of the Holy Spirit. When the person sees it, he will believe. Jesus said, these signs shall follow them that believe. He said, in my name they shall cast out devils. He didn't say that we know them by what they say. It's by proof. That's why the journey is not a journey of coercing people. It's a journey of power. Jesus was the son of God. I told you yesterday, he didn't start preaching. He was living his life like a normal person for 30 years. It was after he came back from the Mount of Temptation the Bible said he came in the power of the Spirit. That was when Jesus began to preach. The moment the power of the Spirit came upon him, he ran to the synagogue and he opened the book of Isaiah and he began to tell them who he is. He knew who he was from when he was a child. But there was no authority to produce that manifesto. The manifesto is subject to his receipt of power. Some of us will come and tell people we are prophets. And then they say, ah, thank God, prophet, welcome you. There's this challenge in the family. And then prophet begins to say, you know, God will have uh, the mercies of God. Prophet begins to escape because you have not touched power. And then you want to do an assignment that can only be carried out on the template of power. It's an aberration of reality. I want to show you what it means. You know, yesterday when I was sharing with you, I didn't even have time to talk to you about the spirit of grace and supplication. I just wanted to show you what it means to walk in it. Because it's possible for you to come to a meeting and then a glory, a dimension of the glory of God comes upon you and then you receive a capacity and you run with it for two weeks. And then as the glory dissipates, you begin to fall short of the glory. But the goal of God is for you to walk in faith. The goal of God is not for you to walk by any special assistance. It's for you to grow in faith and walk in faith because it's only by faith that you can please Him. And the reason we were created was to please Him. 
the 24 elders they fell on their face they say all things were created for thy pleasure and the bible said god can only be pleasured when we worship him and we walk with him by faith so i had to take time yesterday to show you what it means to walk in the reality of the spirit of grace and supplication and that was why i took time to show you how that abraham was called from among his kindred he was separated from his kindred and when you are called from your kindred what god does is that by supplication by prayer by waiting in the spirit he begins to draw you to the center of his reality and i use the tabernacle of moses as a depiction to tell you how we journey from our body through our soul to our spirit i showed you the outer court i showed you the inner court and i showed you the holy of holies where the presence of god dwells because one of the things that the spirit of supplication does for you is to bring you to the center of god's way is to bring you to the center and the circumference of the presence of god where the totality of his reality is domesticated because that's where your journey begins from but today i want to show you two other dimensions of the workings of the spirit of grace and supplication is tomorrow i will define what grace and supplication is because tomorrow when i define it the reality will fall in the beauty i want you to have understanding Jesus is God. Jesus is God. And by implication of that statement, Jesus doesn't need to have power. It is from Him that power originates. You see, there are 12 cardinal names in scriptures that is used to describe the person of God. And all of those names did not just describe who God is. It also reveals to us the workings of God in different dispensation as the civilization of humanity stretches out in time. The first name of God that was revealed to us in scripture is the name Elohim. And the word Elohim reveals the plurality of oneness. It reveals the three God in one person. And it did not just reveal that mystery. It also reveals to us the fact that God is almighty. The meaning of Elohim is almighty. It means he's not just might. But every might is gathered together to form who he is. He is the Elohim. And if the reason God revealed himself as Elohim was because he wanted to carry out a feat. That was only possible with the one that holds all power. That feat is called the feat of creation. So as the almighty, as the one who was the custodian of the totality of power in the universe, he showed up and he gathered creation together. Creation was not in existence anywhere. Because all that was was eternity. He spoke space and time and matter into being. He created the heavens and the earth as Elohim. That name was supposed to reveal to us that God is the custodian of all kinds of power. And when man fell, another dimension of the name of God was revealed. The name Jehovah. As Jehovah, he is revealed as the one that has the authority to punish iniquity. And that is also another dimension of the revelation of the power of God. Because, for instance... If you are not my son, and you misbehave, I don't have the right to punish you. The right I have to punish you is predicated upon the fact that I am your father. So I have authority over your life. So when Jehovah was revealed as the one that has authority to punish iniquity, it was also a revelation of the power of God as the owner and the custodian of creation. So everything in creation is answerable to him. So Jehovah was revealed first in Genesis chapter 2 verse 4 after that man fell. Genesis chapter 3 verse 4. He called him Jehovah Elohim. And God continued to reveal himself like that. By healing power. By all kinds of sovereign power. Until the last one that was revealed in Ezekiel chapter 48 verse 35. He called him Jehovah Shammah. Jehovah Shammah. Is a revelation that in that place God will dwell. That is the last dispensation of the workings of God among humanity. It is a reality that will be found in the new Jerusalem. That means beginning is God, end is God. 
by that authority it reveals that God holds all power that constitutes and comprises, navigates and controls the operation of the universe. He was there before the beginning began. And even when the end comes, he will be there. And that is why in that world that is to come, he said there will be no sun. He said Jesus will become the light of that creation. Because Jehovah Shammah is the one that powers all things that happen there. But you see, when Jesus came into time, Jesus began to show us a prototype, a lifestyle that will give humanity the capacity to succeed and fulfill the purpose of God for their existence. Because when Jesus came into time, Jesus had to seek power to be able to do what he needed to do. Now, Jesus existed before he was born as the Word of God. And as the Word of God, he was co-equal with the Father. And if he was co-equal and one with the Father, he has all the powers that the Father had. But when he became flesh, he needed power to fulfill the mandate that was upon his life. And the reason Jesus suddenly was in need of power is because in order for him to satisfy the claims of divine justice, he had to become a mortal man like every one of us. So if you study the book of Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, it reveals to us that Jesus stripped himself of the garment of divinity. In theology we call it the kenosis doctrine. It is the emptying away of yourself so that you can take another reality. So everything that made him God, the powers, the authority, that made him the sovereign one, he emptied himself of it so that he could be exactly like man. Because the law of the spirit is that the entity that failed is the entity that will pay the price. So when an angel fell, it is only an angel that can rescue an angel. But unfortunately, an angel is not in time. An angel is in eternity. And anything that happens in eternity is continuous. It can't stop anymore. So there's no hope for the angelic. When man fell, it's only man that has the capacity to pay the price for man because the wages of sin is dead. So Jesus had to become a complete man. That's the law of the spirit. When man locked the ark, when God locked the ark of Noah, Noah could not open it. God was the one that would open it. When Adam was sent out of the garden of Eden, he was standing in Eden as a guardian. The angel that came to replace him was also a guardian cherub. Because your status and your, 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 your reality is what we speak for you at all times. So when man fell, only man could save man. So Jesus had to empty himself of everything that makes him God and became the likeness of man. As the likeness of man, he was stripped of power. He was emptied of power. However, he had to survive in this world. He had to live in this world to fulfill his destiny. Just like every one of us. It was not possible except as he apprehends power. And that was why the life of Jesus was a life of prayer. Jesus prayed all his life. The Bible said in Acts, in, in Mark chapter 1 verse 35, He said, early in the morning, He will separate Himself into a solitary place. There He prayed. Because He knew that without prayer, there is no way He could apprehend the power of the Spirit. The Bible said when Jesus was baptized, as He was lifted out of the water, He came out praying. There was nothing Jesus knew like prayer. He prayed from the beginning. And even at the end, when he was dying, he died with prayer. Because Jesus knew that to survive in this world and to as much as fulfill destiny, you must be in apprehension of power. And the only thing that will take you into the realm where power dwells is prayer. You see, church have said it erroneously that prayer, that a prayerless Christian is a powerless Christian. And that power is in prayer. You see, the power is not actually in prayer. The power is in the Holy Ghost. But prayer is what carries you into the Spirit. So Jesus, the Bible said, He returned in Luke chapter 4 verse 14 in the power of the Spirit. Not in the power of prayer. He returned in the power of the Spirit. And the reason Jesus pursued power before He began ministry was because He knew that the people He was contending with they were entities that were in custody of power. He said, if I, by the finger of God, cast out devils, it means
means the kingdom, the government, the dominion of God is among you. So the only way casting out demons was possible is if you are in sync with the dominion of heaven. So one of the reasons we pray, supplicate in the spirit is because we need power. Without power, there is no fulfillment of destiny. They can pour a drum of oil on you. You will remain the way you are. I know this one by experience. This one, I know it by experience. God's choice servant, Bishop David Oedepo, have anointed me. I know it by experience. You don't enter into it because you were anointed. Everything that is placed on you is a seed. When you pray, you ginger it to life. That's what your destiny depends on. Power. Why? Because you are seated in the world of darkness. The Bible said, the habitation of cruelty. The habitation. He calls the extreme the habitation of cruelty. He said, the devil cometh not but for to kill, to steal, and to destroy. That's the manifesto of the devil. The only way you can live above death is as you glide on the wings of power. And the only strategy Jesus showed us was by prayer. So when Jesus did mighty works, the people did not say his words were strong. They wonder. They say, by what power doth this man these mighty works? So they knew everything Jesus was doing was a manifestation of power. The guys had understanding. So they won't go and do trial and error. And meanwhile, the foolish ones that tried it, they saw what happened to them. The Bible said the sons of Sceva. You know, they were in Ephesus. And Paul told us that in Ephesus, he contended with the beasts of Ephesus. In Ephesus, Paul saw strange dimensions of power. It was in Ephesus that Paul displayed the highest intelligence. In fact, if you read the book of Ephesians, that's where Paul spoke about the deepest mysteries in his writing. In Ephesus, he contended with powers of all kinds. He argued for two years, debating with the people about the mysteries of the kingdom. It was in Ephesus that the Bible said, handkerchiefs and aprons were carried from the body of Paul, and they were placed on the sick. They recovered, and demons cried out of them. When these guys saw the move of power in the life of Paul, they now went and said, and they wanted to conjure a demon. The power Paul manifested in Ephesus was terrible. The Bible said, they that used curious act, they brought their books, astrologers, diviners, necromancers, witches, wizards, experts of necromancy, people that were trained in the art of wizardry, they gathered all their books and they sold it. They burnt it because they saw a dimension of power that was coming out from a celestial realm. And this guy saw Paul, instead of finding out how Paul entered into those dimensions, they went to do what Paul was doing. They think it is in the activity. It's not in the activity. It's where you are seated in the spirit. Because everything he was doing in the natural was a revelation of the throne that he was sitting on in the spirit. Power. Without power, there is no destiny in view. Without power, there is no hope. Without power, there is no future. That's why I say power is not falling down. Power is actually uninstalling, discomfiting, demonic installations. When you see a man prospering, he is in sync with the spirit. Begin anything. You see, the reason most of us are not aware is because we have not grown in anything. Begin to do anything. When you come to a level and what you are doing begin to shake the territory, then the princes that have authority over the territory begin to appear to you. That's when for the first time, you will know that prayer meeting is not just two and three people gathered to pray. When your prayers begin to cause vibrations and reverberation in the spirit, suddenly one day you'll be going home and a beam will stand before you. you. Say, by what authority are you doing what you are doing? By what authority? I was contending with the spirit, this a serpentine demon that was choking the lives of people in Buenos Aires University. I didn't graduate from there, but I was at home one period and the body came. And as I was praying, I was locked in the room praying and one day I laid down as I was praying a naked woman walked out of the wall from my back 
I never knew there was a door there. <laughs> you have not seen anything. You have not done it. Even the business, people who do business, there's a level. Before you enter into the level of millions, they will tell you, men mortars don't cross this line. For you to cross this line, you must be enabled by spirit. That's why these people go into fraternity with demons. Because they know where they should go to. But you come there and spirits show up. They tell you, human beings don't travel beyond here. We are the ones that represent men after this line. So you fraternize with the spirit and he speaks for you from that realm. Mortars don't journey past here. It is called the regions of the great beyond. A naked woman walked out of the wall. And she carried a red apron on her shoulder like a Babylonian prostitute. And as I laid on the ground, my mouth opened. My eyes opened. I was left in bewilderment. Where did she come out from? As I was lost in my wonders, she walked by my side, God just said, You know, demons hang on people and you see demons. Have you, if you have seen a demon, you have seen a demon. They are funny creatures. You see a demon hang on somebody and he's struggling the person. Maybe what is what you hear in your head sometimes. He say, go and meet the boy now. Go and meet the boy. You think it's your thought. No, it's a whisperer. He's showing you all the pictures of all the, 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 the pornographic things you have watched. All the girls you have lost it after. And then he's telling you, go and see the guy. Go and see the guy. Go and see. Then your thought, you can't control it. You move. That's how demons operate. They hang on people like tiny creatures like monkeys. If you have seen a demon, you know what they look like. And some of them are strange. Some demons are just a head rolling about very fast and carrying out quick, 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 quick activity. But principalities are not like that. Principalities are not like that because they have authority over territories. If a demon comes here, he's trespassing, he's afraid. When a principality comes here, he's claiming right over the territory. So even if you are praying, he can walk up to you and ask you, by what authority are you doing what you are doing? Because that one is not a demon, it's a principality. That's why Jesus was fasting. The devil waited for him after 40 days and he came to Jesus and he was strolling with Jesus. Now, a man who has fasted with the presence, with the presence, that tangible, thick presence, the devil comes strolling with him. He said, hey, young man, you are hungry. Jesus looked at him. He said, turn this stone to bread now. Why are you behaving like this? You are hungry. What are you waiting for? Turn these stones to bread. What? Jesus and the devil told him, turn these stones to bread. And Jesus used scriptures. Because at that point, the only thing that gives you authority is your understanding of mysteries. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, by every word that comes from the mouth of the Father. And he said, okay, you have passed the test of hunger, right? Your appetite is not your God. I right, come, come, let me show you something. And he carried Jesus and went to the pinnacle of a mountain. Which mountain can you stand on and see the whole glory of the world? There's no mountain like that. So what the devil actually did was that he carried Jesus into an elevated place in the spirit. Where Jesus could see the glory of the world. He began to show him all the kings. Look at Nebuchadnezzar. I empowered him. Look at Zexus. I empowered him. Look at Alexander. He began to show Jesus all the mighty glory that he has given to men. He said, bow to me, I will give it to you. Power. When you press and reach a crescendo, then you begin to interact with entities. That's when you will know that life is not all you see. This being walked into my room, God just me. Circled around me, and she came and sat on me. And as she sat down, that was when I discovered her head was a man. The demon of perversion. A naked woman, but her head was a man. I pushed this lady with all my strength. She didn't even notice if something was touching her. What? In my folly, I went to bite her, her back. And as I beat her, she didn't even shake. That was when I realized that there is trouble. And I looked into heaven. I surrendered. Sometimes what keeps you in bondage is your struggle in the flesh. A spirit of immorality is operating in your head and you are using your will. You say, I will not, I will not. The guy comes in the morning, you say, get out. In the afternoon, get out. After three days, he now downs on you. Then that demon will now bring another strategy. So 
then they will invoke loneliness into you. And then you suddenly start feeling lonely. You carry your phone, you check. Nobody has called you in two weeks. Suddenly you discover that it's only this guy that is calling you. Say, okay, since there is loneliness, you now pick the call. See, stop disturbing me now. I don't like this. Your will is already subjugated. Because what is coming against you is called power. It's not reason. Why you remain in bondage? Because you struggle in the flesh. I struggled. Nothing came out. That was when I lifted my hand. And I said, Jesus, save me. And light came from heaven and struck her. But because I beat her back, I walked with lust for two weeks. I had to rush to a person. I said, see the issue. Every girl I see now, I want to hug her. What is happening? This is what I... He said, what did you see? <laughs> Your own Christianity is only doctrine. You know doctrine. So you think it's doctrine. Everything we, t- we say, the whole scriptures you are seeing is a person. The scriptures, everything that is true to the scripture is a person. The day you see it, you will enter into his reality. The day you see healing, you will see Jesus. And then you will enter into the side of Jesus that is called healing. But if you don't know it, you will think it's doctrine. What did you see? I said, well, I was stretching in the place of prayer. And this being came out, sat on me. I pushed her, she didn't go. I beat her. And then, he just laughed. What I was praying and struggling with for two weeks, God's servant placed his hand on me and said, See, forget, forget, forget. Spiritual things are not for babes. <laughs> God's servant put his hand on me, and then he didn't say anything. He just stayed there, stayed there, stayed there, stayed there, stayed there. And then he released the shout. I release you. So, because I beat this woman, I was locked up somewhere. What I call struggling, what I call lost, is a chain around my mind. I release you. Power. You don't succeed in life outside of power. Everything Jesus did was by power. By power. By power. By power. That's why I say all powers belong to you. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. You don't even have a walk in life except that you domesticate power. That is why we pray. That is why we are even crying today that we will be engraved from on high with the spirit of supplication. Because this place you call university, if your eye opens in the spirit, then you discover that it's a city. It's a city. The demons in this territory are more numerous than the whole student and lecturers put together. When you begin to engage them, then suddenly, they begin to fight. That's when you will come to church and everything the president is saying, you are being irritated. Because what the spirit is trying to do is to create anger in your heart. Because anger is a gate in the spirit. The moment anger, indignation arises in your heart, then the demon enters into the place. When you begin to contend with them, that's when you will be going home. And suddenly they will tell you, one of your papers, they didn't see it. They will begin to fight your result, fight your academy. Some of you will now discover you read, you can't remember again. What's happening? Because you saw people praying and then you rush, you went and joined them. No, it's warfare. There's no place in the Bible that suggests life is fun. When you see people thinking life is fun, going from one club to the other, going to this Mr. Biggs, E3, they don't have understanding. Read the whole Bible from beginning to the end. It doesn't suggest anywhere that life is fun. The only thing it tells you is that life is a warfare. Say so we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. That's why you must lay hold on power. In Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3, the Bible said that according as his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and to godliness. All things. So everything you have in life was given to you according to the dictates of power. It is by power that your destiny was encoded. When Moses climbed the mountain and he saw God writing the laws on the tablet of stone, that would have been the greatest wonder in this world. Because what God wrote on the stone, the Bible said, fire came out of his finger and he inscribed the laws upon the tablet of stone. So when the laws were on the stone, they were burning. They were burning with fire. That would have been
be the greatest wonder of all time. You see a tablet of stone and fire burning inside. That's how your destiny was written. It was written by power. But principalities, they can peep. The Bible says wizards, they peep. They can peep into the spirit and check and discover that. Kai! This man, when he's 25, something will come upon him. And if we don't stop him before that time, we will lose. So they begin to fight him. But the only way you can journey into the boat of power is by prayer. All the great men we read about, it was by prayer they entered. The Bible said Moses, he was in the presence for 40 days. He said when he came out, he wished not that his face shone like the sun. The man became a god. Even Jesus himself, in Matthew chapter 17 verse 2, he said as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment became glistering. When he descended from the mountain, the apostles that didn't go up were struggling with a demon. And he came and he rebuked the demon once and he left. You will think it's by the audible voice. So you come to cast a demon. You say, get out! No, it's not by shouting. It's by power. You say, this kind goeth not but by prayer and by fasting. The unbelief that is choking you from releasing the power, it is prayer that will remove that unbelief by power. Without power, destiny is not in view. If you like, have the biggest connections in the world. The biggest of connections. I used, to, I, I used to tell this story. I had this friend of mine. The father was a big man. They were waiting for him to just write his final paper. In fact, he was supposed to start working before going for service. To become a deputy director in Arik. A graduate without experience. That was about eight years ago. Two weeks to his graduation, his father died. He said, woe unto the man that put his trust in the arm of flesh. Flesh doesn't have capacity to engender protocols and policies that were instituted by the voice of the sovereign monarch of Zion. By power. Only by power. He said, all things that pertain to life and godliness. He said, he gave it by power. He said, you will enter it through the knowledge of Christ. Through the knowledge. Through the knowledge through the knowledge, the word knowledge in that scripture is the word epignosis through the revelation when you pray, what happens is that you are carried into the realm where those things make meaning, because in time there are mysteries the Bible said God has hid these things in mysteries for our glory he said it's in mystery, that's why the princes of this world do not know, he said for if the princes of this world had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory he said to them that are without is a mystery. But unto you is given to know the secrets of the kingdom. But for you to know the secrets of the kingdom, you must travel through the portals of revelation. And what carries you into that part is prayer. Because if you don't enter, you cannot apprehend the power. And if you don't apprehend the power, you will fail in life. It doesn't matter if you are a first class graduate. One of my disciples currently in Abuja, he made first class degree from Usmanda, so for the University of Sokoto in chemistry. He was the best in the history of the department. But when he finished, they told him to convert to Islam. And he refused. And he doesn't have a job till now. A first class graduate. It's foolishness for you to put all your confidence in paper. A paper that a rat can eat. But there is a God that we serve. Power, power, power. There are four Greek words for power in the scriptures. The one used in that scripture is dynamis. The other ones that you see mostly in the life of Jesus and the ministry of Jesus is exousia. And then you have iskos, you have practice. You see, dynamis is potential power. It doesn't have capacity to do anything. If they keep a ball on this roof, the ball, because of the potential difference between the height of the roof and the down, the ball accumulates energy. But that ball cannot release that energy so long as it remains on the roof, because it's a potential. But if anything pushes the ball, and the ball begins to roll, if it comes down, it may, if it hits you on the head, it may give you a headache, because of the energy it accumulated on account of the potential difference. 
That's what dynamics is. It's a potential power. Until you convert it to kratos. It can't make meaning. What translates potential power to dynamic power, to working power, is prayer. That's what the Bible said in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. He said you should be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. What it means is that be enabled in the Lord and in the kratos of His ischus. Be enabled in the Lord so that what you carry as dynamics can be changed into the power that can work. What you are seeing as electricity is kratos. But it is coming from the generator. The energy is in the dynamo of the generator. When you own the generator and the dynamo peaks, it's after the dynamo peaks that you see light. It's after the dynamo peaks that you hear sound. What you need is kratos, not dynamis. Dynamis gives you the potential and the capacity to walk in the reality. But until you labor in the place of prayer and convert dynamis to kratos, you will be lost in the hands of the devil. That's why we labor in prayers. We ask for the spirit of supplication. And that's why what the devil distracts you from the most is prayer. You can sit down and hear a message for six months. He won't bother. Because he knows that it will enter you and they will become seeds. Until you begin to whine it in the place of prayer. You will not amount to anything. Power. Power. Everything you need is circled in power. Even your identity in the spirit realm is power. Say, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are you? The register is not a function of name. It's who are you in the spirit? Who are you? Jesus is the Christ. He's sitting on the throne. He's called the right hand of God. That's the place of power. Paul is an apostle. By ordination, he has entered into his reality. Who are you? What throne are you sitting on? Most of us don't have an identity in the spirit. We call ourselves names. Some even go to cast out devils and what they receive is a dirty slap. <laughs> One of our guys went to cast out devil and the guy just landed the gear landed the guy. And this will become so strong when they are demonized. Landed the guy a terrible slap. And the guy said, What? The guy landed the gear back. <laughs> that action proves where the guy is coming from. And that's why the demon slapped him. He's a carnal man. A fallen spiritual people are acting like he's a spiritual man. No, you don't act like. The spirit comes upon you and changes you into another man. He said, so, he told Saul, so. he said, as you go to the plains of Tabor by the garrison of the Philistine, you will see a company of prophets coming with tablets, with pipes, with harp and with musical instruments. He said, there, the spirit of God will come upon you and you will be changed into another man. It's until you are changed you don't have the capacity of participation. Power is why we pray, we labor, we stay there. If power has not come, we are not qualified to move. Jesus told the apostles in the book of Luke chapter 24 verse 49, he said, tarry ye in Jerusalem until you are endued with power. When Jesus was about to leave, he said, you shall receive the Holy Ghost. He said, you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in all, in Samaria, and the uttermost part of the earth. But don't move until you are endued with power. If power have not come, you are not a witness. You go and speak English and die. Demons don't understand the English language. They understand power. That's why your family, people are, are in bondage and you, you are there speaking English. You go to pray and then you speak English. Speak English. When you are speaking English, the demon will just come and close your eye and you will sleep there. Flies perch on cold food. When you are hot, they run away. If they come, they die. A man of power, as he shows up, darkness runs because they know they are in trouble. Power. You are not praying. You think it's by scriptures. You will quote them and quote until you quote your way into death. Bishop Oedipo said he went to fast for three days. He was beaten by rain. The clothes he wore, sun dried it on his body. And he was there praying, praying, praying. And as he was coming down from the mountain, an angel appeared to him. He said, this day I have taught your tongue with the coal of fire. As you speak, you will see it happen. You will be erroneously foolish. 
to hear his messages and quote the scripture he's quoting. When you quote it, a demon will strike you with hepatitis. <laughs> you reign, you ancient Zion's king, Kadosh, Kadosh. You reign, you reign, you reign. Zion's king. Listen, listen, listen. Better stay there in the place of prayer until you are endued with power. Jesus didn't do anything for 30 years. Because what we do for God is not calculated by time. It's calculated by life. He was there for 30 years. You would think he's wasting his time. He was waiting for ordination. What Jesus achieved in 40 days, he couldn't achieve in 30 years. The day power came for three and a half years, he changed the world forever. 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 If it means waiting until you are 40, wait. When power comes, one day can become greater than 50 years. It's by power. It's by power. Great God, your spirit of the deep. I am God. You are mighty. You reign, you reign, you reign. You reign, do you know do you know what prayer does for you do you know what prayer does for you? See, prayer, prayer is like a refinery. You see, the most expensive liquid in the world is the crude oil. In the crude oil, you have petrol, you have kerosene, you have diesel, you have asphalt, you have vaseline, you have bitumen. But when it's mixed together as crude oil, it has no value. In the refinery, what they do is that they expose it to heat. And then as the crude oil ascends through the fractionating tower, all the values in the crude oil is separated. Is separated. Then petrol is collected. And then one liter of petrol becomes 150 naira. Then the, 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 the kerosene is separated. The diesel is separated. The asphalt is separated. The bitumen is separated. Why? Because it was subjected to the distillation tower. Prayer refines you. In your vessel, is the heritage of God. He said, this treasure is an earthen vessel. It's an earthen vessel. But it must be separated by the protocol of prayer. You are there in your weakness. You are there in your corrupt nature. It is by prayer that it is going to separate the value that God has put in you. Some of you is your gift. And it is your gift that will make room for you. Because he said, a man's gift make it room for him. And cause him to stand before him. He didn't say a man's certificate. You have wasted four years looking for certificate. And you have not developed your gift. It is your gift that will make room for you. And the only way your gift can appear is by prayer. You reign, you reign, you reign. Listen, let me tell you something. This thing happens. It happens to us every day. Every day. I know it like I know the hand. I know my hand. Yesterday as we left here, we left here after the release of the power of God. People were still on the floor after we left. As we entered the hotel, as I was driving to the hotel, I came down, I was walking to my room. A man who lodged that hotel, he was a, a he was he's currently an advisor to the governor of this state. He was a former PDP chairman. He is contesting for the post of a senator. 
And when he saw me walking, he saw the glory of God. And he asked them, he said, please, can I meet this man? This man is over 65 years. You see why people of the world are more intelligent. Jesus said the children of the world, they are in their generation wiser than the sons of the kingdom. You may come, you may come for the meeting. What you are seeing is a small boy. But a man of 65 years, he saw it. He ran to me. When he came to the room, you were there. He said, Daddy, 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 why? He understand the mystery in the kingdom. He said, surely the lesser is blessed of the greater. He has money. He has political power. But what he needs to be enthroned is a spiritual power. And he saw somebody that had it. He said, Daddy, Daddy. I told him by word of knowledge. After we had caught him in the night, a lot of things. What was happening to his wife who is in Jalingo? What was happening to his daughter who is in Abuja? He called me around 5, 10, 5, 10 minutes by 5 a.m. this morning. And he came to the room. He came with a big envelope. A big envelope. A big envelope. I can't end that body in one month. But listen, it's called power. Before he came, the Holy Ghost told me, don't take his money. I trust the Holy Ghost more than money. And when he brought the money, I said, no, I don't need your money. But if you must give to God, look for a church, give it to them. Then God will remember you from a sanctuary. It's called power. When you know these secrets, nobody, nobody encourages you to pray again. You know why? Your reality is in the spirit. When you see a lady manifesting and you are casting down the demon, the demon that is in her, the reality of that demon might be in the water. So when you speak here, your authority goes to uninstall that demon in the water. Then the lady manifests here and the demon goes out. Your own reality is in heaven. It is by prayer that you will be carried. When you are carried to your reality, then it begins to speak on earth. Jesus said, the Son of Man, which is in heaven, when he speaks from heaven, there is no force on earth that can stop him. Why? Because him that is from above is above all. So he's talking from heaven. You can't talk from earth and have results. You only talk from heaven. That's why in the resurrection, he said we are seated with him in heavenly places. Only men of prayer can travel into the experience of heaven. You reign, you reign, you let me tell you let me tell you what they don't know some of you even your parents don't know you they look at you and they say useless boy they don't know you your teachers look at you they say blockhead they say useless boy they call you harlot some of you they call you thief they don't know you do you know what they call peter do you know what they call james they call them peasants they call them unlearned men they call them fishermen but when they encountered power something happened See, today professors are studying the writings of Peter. Professors are studying the writings of Jude. These men were fishermen. They had no value. It is until you enter power. That's when you will prove to the world that you are not what they are calling you. They don't know you. Your reality is in heaven. The Bible said, He has put eternity in their hearts. I am as deep as eternity. You can't judge me in time. I am deeper than time. Even when I leave this body, when I leave this body, my spirit is going somewhere. I will be carried by the Holy Ghost through the purpose of the great divine. I will stand with Jesus on the corridor of eternity. You don't know me. If the war to come, I am part of the blocks that will build that city. Who told you you can call me a name? You can't call me a name. You know why? Jesus said everybody they are calling names. 
they are wrong. He said, when you come to eternity, he said, I will give you a name that no man knows. Because in time, they may call you a foolish man. In time, they may call you a businessman. Hey, 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 I am a cherub. I walk on the corridors of immortality. I have gone to meetings with angels. I have gone to meetings with prophets. I'm not an ordinary man. If you want to know me, travel to heaven. They will tell you who I am. You ancients are your own skin. It takes only a man of understanding to know you. They don't know you. They don't know you. Don't accept the name they are calling you. They don't know you. They don't know you. If they want to know you, they take let them go to heaven. Jesus will tell them who you are. Jesus will tell them. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? The Bible said the wise men from the east. The Magi's, they were astrologers. When they saw Jesus, Jesus was a baby. But they said to Herod, he said, where is the king that was born? We have come to worship him. They didn't see a baby. They saw a king because they saw him from the spirit. They don't know you. Anybody who wants to talk about you, let him first of all go to heaven. That's where the reality is. Hey, 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 hey. It's time to pray in tongues. I hear a sound from heaven. Listen, listen, listen. Men are about to be carried into their realities. Men are about to be carried into their ultimatum. It's not about the preaching. A realm has opened. A realm. A realm. <laughs> Ik ga 
I see a garment in the spirit. I see a garment. It's a garment of intercession. Listen to what this garment is coming to do. Families are about to be delivered. God wants to raise priests in families. And you are the priest of your family. As we begin to pray now, the garments will begin to descend. It will begin to descend. Holy Ghost! 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 Holy Gh
perceive the demon leave you and those of you that have loved ones that are sick you can call them now call them the power of god will touch them and those you cannot call hold them in the place of prayer now now yokes yokes are about to be broken holy ghost 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 There's about to be a wide baptism of fire. Don't help God now. Those of you on this road, lift your hands. There's a this road, lift your hands. There's about to be a wide baptism. 
as this power descends on you, your life will change forever. At the count of three, Holy Spirit, fall upon them. Holy Ghost one, Holy Ghost two, Holy Ghost three, touch! from this room. Prophets. Prophets. Men of authority in the kingdom. And at the count of three, Holy Ghost, fall upon them. Holy Ghost one. Holy Ghost two. Holy Ghost three. Move. 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 Let's 
God wants to raise some among you psalmists that have prophetic dimensions. Prophetic dimensions. And I've seen people that have capacity to lead in places of authority. And so, dear Spirit of the living God, I stretch my hands and I make it happen by the Spirit. After the count of three, Holy Ghost one, Holy Ghost two, Holy Ghost three, move, move. Oh, oh,
name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Lord, you showed me that you want to raise 45 persons that will form the army, the army, the army that will move the banners of Zion within this territory. Lord, even right now, the is great. I ask that your hand begin to descend. 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 Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Pick them down. Pick them. Find them. Find them. Find them. Find them. Find them. Find them. In the Holy Ghost. Ah. 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 In the Holy Ghost. Ah. 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 It's a spiritual ceremony. The hour will be falling on people. You'll be drunk. 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 You'll be drunk to the Holy Ghost. Something the Holy Ghost are open. Ah, ah, ah. Something the Holy Ghost are open. Ah, ah, ah. The Lord wants me to pray for the sick. Listen, 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 listen. We don't have time. We don't have time. That's why I'm cutting short, cutting short. But even after the meeting, most of you will still remain under the anointing. I don't have time. Listen, listen, listen. You are sick on your body. Place your hands there. Place your hands. Is there anybody here that has a deafening condition? You have a challenge with your ear. Is there anybody? Is there anybody here that has a challenge with the ear? Just place your hands. Place your hands. Where you have your challenge. Where you have your challenge. Who has a challenge with the left ear? The left ear. Is there anybody? The left ear. Anybody? I'm seeing a lady that has a challenge with the left ear. The left ear. The lady challenge. You? Yours is what? Left ear. What's the challenge? Huh? He smells. He smells. This person I'm passing. Any other lady? There's a, you, what's your challenge? Come. Come quickly. Challenge. There's another person that has pain. Excruciating pain. That makes it difficult for you to hear. You can't even hear. Who is the person? Come quickly. The Lord wants to rebuke the spirit of deafness. Go ahead. Put your hands there. Put your hands there. Put your hands there. There are about seven of them. Leave it in the ear. What's your challenge? Pain. Pain. On the left ear. The Lord wants to heal. The Lord wants to heal. Meanwhile, you have any challenge, put your hands where you have challenge now. You want to rebuke demons by the healing power. Shawa Tika Zeibu Varapa Tumela Suanda Haskia Perua Skevanabunde Nakaitoa. Father, in the name of Jesus, I arrest, I arrest every spirit of infirmity. I arrest every spirit of infirmity right now. I command you, get out of their bodies. Get out of their bodies. Get out. Get out Get of out. their bodies. Out. Command the chains of sickness. Ah. The yoke of sickness. Ah. Break. 
pray get the out. power of God. Get out. 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 People. People will shout as the chains are broken now. I command you. Get out. Get out in the name of Jesus. Out. Get out. Out. Shalom. Shalom. Go back to that. Shalom. 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 You are mighty. Shalom. Shalom. You are mighty in this place. Shalom. Shalom. Yeshua. Shalom. 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 You are my dear. You can go ahead and wash it now. You can wash it now. The mighty God is in it. The monarch of Zion is in it now. Shalom. Shalom. You are my Shalom. 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 Shalom, 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 Pain just left somebody's chest. An excruciating pain just left somebody's chest. Check. Check. A pain on your chest like heaviness. It just left. It just left. The Lord is healing now. Just check yourself. I'm seeing my dreams, my pain heavens. Lift jumping out of people. Shalom. Things are already going. Things are already going. Meanwhile, the rest of you here, you can check your ears now. You are healed. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Healed. Healed in Jesus' name. Go ahead and check. Take them outside. Let them check. I don't want to. Shalom, 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 shalom. Osa, shalom, osa, osa. Just vanish from the earth. Osa, pain. My God, my God, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Listen, somebody came in here with menstrual pain, excruciating menstrual pain that have troubled you for years. The pain just left. Osa pain also just left. Just left. It just left like that. I'm telling you, it just left. It just Hello. left. I'm seeing somebody healed Hello. of breath issue. Breath issue. What Hello. you have is you use inhaler. Breath issues. Your lungs have been cleared. Your lungs have just been cleared. Your lungs have been cleared. Check yourself. Check yourself. Check your healing. Find your healing. Enough time to spectate. The power of God is still touching people. All shall just be sensitive. I don't want people injured. Hello, you mighty in this place. Listen, listen, listen. I'm still a young man. A young man that every time money comes into your hand, that's when you become foolish. You become foolish. As the worship was going on, something jumped out of you. You have been healed. You have been restored. Mind issues. God is taking care of mind issues. Mind issues. I've seen somebody with rage. Rage. There is terrible anger. When you are in rage, if you are provoked, you can carry anything and hit anybody. I'm seeing it. The spirit just left you. And you sensed it depart. You sensed it depart. Check your healing now. And if you have found it, come out. Yes. Shalom. 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 You are mighty in this place. Shalom, 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 shalom. You are mighty in this place. Shalom, 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 shalom. Let's worship. Let's worship. Hallelujah, we are out of time. We are out of time. Just check your body. Check your body. Check your body. 
Check your body. You discover there's been a healing. You discover there's been a healing in your body. Come quickly. I'll just say two or three testimonies. Where are the people with deafening condition? I told them to go out and check. Bring them in. They are healed. Just go ahead. Check. Check your body now. Listen to the instruction. Listen to the instruction. Listen to the instruction. Go ahead and check your... How many persons came here with sickness? Just lift your hand. You came here with sickness. Now check your bodies. You have been healed. Come out. If what you came with is no longer there, come out and testify. I want to take a few testimonies. Here are the guys with ear issues. I asked them to be taken outside to test it. Check with them and bring them back. See why? As those who are filing for healing, stay at the left hand side. You are here. Listen. Listen. You are here. No, not that way. Go to the left hand side. You are here. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm not talking about religion. Can you please help those people under the anointing? Can you help them calm them down? Just place your hand on them and declare peace. 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 Declare peace. Declare peace. Alright, listen now. You are here. You have not made Jesus the Lord of your life. You were born in church. You are, you are going to church. But you know that Jesus doesn't have authority over your life. You do what you want, when you want, and you make your choices. I want to give you an opportunity today to make Jesus the Lord of your life. If you are in that category, come out quickly. Let me join faith with you. Let me join faith with you. You are here, you want to make Jesus the Lord of your life. Before now, you do, you live your life the way you want. But right now, you want to submit your life to Jesus so that He will take control, take authority over your life. Come to the right hand side. Let's do that very quickly. Let's do that very quickly. That's right, brother. Come to the right hand side.
you are just looking like that. A pain he has struggled with from 2017. From accident. Nobody, nobody has a right. You're a miracle worker. Shalom, yeah, 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 yeah. You're mighty. Wow. A fractured wow. joint. Wow. After operation at the pelvic, I've been feeling excruciating pain since 2017. Just vanished. Hey. And you came with headache. You came with fever. You want to live like that. You are not wise. Somebody wants to lay hold on Jesus and say, Give me my own. Give me my own. It's your time. Nobody has a right to live here tonight sick. I command every sickness. Get out of them. In the name of Jesus. I command every sickness. Get out. Get out. In the name of Jesus. What has God done? It's a package of so many problems, affliction. Affliction. Since Package on, of affliction. Since on Sunday. Yes. The thing has started. He tried all he could. He went to hospital. They are putting on drips, several drips. You have been on drips? On drips. What's the challenge? The package of everything. Package of sickness, fever. What did they tell you from the hospital? They told me that uh, they, don't, they, don't, they don't consider me. When I go there, they just leave me and put me drip and inject me. They just, so, just are tired of you. But every symptom has vanished. Amen. You were feeling symptoms before. Why are you out? Have you been healed? Yeah, yeah, been you healed. have been healed. Yes. You don't sense the, the, the affliction anymore. That is it. The affliction of God. The affliction of God. Haka haka ya. Haka ki ewe bebe ima. Ore bebe. Ki ewe bebe daido. This Listen, 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 listen. Never take spiritual things for granted. I told you already, it's those of us who are in church that take this thing for granted. Look at my phone now. See who just called me. A man I discharged in the morning. He was going for a meeting. He has begun to see the power of God. What's his name here, sir? The same senator. At the over 65 years, when they see power, they pursue it. That's what makes men. Somebody say power. Power. Shaka parata. Masuka parata. Can you stretch your right hand? Can you stretch your right hand? Say God. Baptize me with power. Baptize me with power. Baptize me with power. Baptize me with power. in Jesus name. Yes. He said, we have been struggling with the life of prayer. 
He has been struggling with prayers. But today, yes, something broke out. Something yes. broke out of his forest. Out. That's a miracle. I tell you the truth. Yes. He's been held back by heaviness. And let that Amen. activation be permanent. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Can you lift your hands toward him? You know you are in the congregation. And Jesus is not Lord over your life. I'm going to give you two more minutes to join these people here. The one that summons you, his name is Jesus. You think it's church play we are doing here. I'm giving you two minutes. You know you are in the congregation. Jesus is not the Lord of your life. It's time to open your heart. Meanwhile, I break every force holding you back. I challenge every force holding you back. I challenge every force holding you back. I challenge you in the name of Jesus. comes to me, I will not cast away. Get out! Get out! Get out! He said, whoever comes to me, I will not cast away. Can you tell Jesus, I come to you today as a sinner. Just tell him with your mouth. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart, the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. He said, if you confess with your mouth, you are carried into salvation. With the heart, man believes unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession 
is made unto salvation. Say this prayer after me and mean it. If you don't mean it, don't say it. It's a waste of time. Say, Dear Father, I come to you today because your word says, Whoever comes to me, I will not cast away. I believe in my heart that Jesus died for my sins and he was raised from the dead for my justification. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is the Lord of my life. Father, let every yoke of affliction, every bondage of iniquity, every mystery of iniquity over my life be broken today. Thank you, Father, because I now belong to your family. In Jesus' name. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will baptize you now. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will baptize you now. Precious Holy Spirit. 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 Brood upon them. I will not have time. Lay hands on them quickly. Baptism of the Holy Ghost. They are giving you gifts. Gifts now. Baptism. Men of God, help me. God servant. We don't have time. There's no time. Please. Thank you, precious Holy Spirit. Who are affording us the privilege to look upon the Father, to draw from His Spirit and from His house. Thank you for affording us the privilege of fellowship with the Divine. Thank you for the equipment that we receive from the very witness of your Spirit. Thank you for the furnishings, the empowerments. Thank you for access to the realm of God. And so tonight, Lord. We are persuaded in our spirit that you will be doing a new work on our inside. That will grant us the capacity as individuals and the corporate ranking to align with the heavens and to fulfill the mandate of Zion in our day and time. Take all the glory, Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. And let the church say, Amen. 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 God bless you. Tonight, we will continue from where we stopped last night. Because God is building an infrastructure that His glory will rest upon. The Bible said, When the Lord shall build up Zion, then He shall appear in His glory. The building process. Is too significant in the agenda of God. The revelation of God's spirit we saw yesterday that it is progressing. And a generation that will be relevant with God must apprehend the revelation of God and that which he seeks to achieve in that generation. Until that is done, a generation might be lost. It's possible. For a whole generation not to be relevant in the calendar of God. Men evaluate things from quantity. Spirits evaluate reality from quality. So the Bible said God is not limited to win with many, nor to conquer with few. Our size does not sustain stature. In the ranking system of science. That we are many does not mean we have value before God. What truly gives us value before God is the quality of our relationship with Him. It's the quality of our soul structure. Because that is what determines what God can hand to our generation. A generation that is not built up may talk about God with boldness, may brag about God. But God's move will be hid from them. And the day God shows up, He may end up judging the generation. Israel, the people of God, that God Himself began by covenanting with Abraham. A boy came in the wilderness. They had no understanding that it was a transition period. They thought it was business as usual. They thought because they were descendants of Abraham. They have a heritage with God. And they thought on the strength of that heritage. Whatever they did did not count. But what they did not understand was that in a transition period, God purges. In a transition period, God sanctifies. And in a transition period, God kills and God maketh alive. 
So he said to Moses, I will wipe out this generation and begin a new generation with you. The question is, what about the covenant you have with Abraham? What about the covenant you have with Isaac? What about the covenant you have with Jacob? In a transition period, the quality of the believer is more important than every other thing he has with God. If the quality of his relationship is defined, then God will have no choice but to obliterate him from the move of the Spirit. This is an understanding that the church was coming to. It's unfortunate we are not aware that the Spirit of God is migrating into another dispensation. We cannot camp where we used to be. Something is coming. The Lord is raising an army. There's a revolution about to hit our landscape, and God is recruiting an army. God is raising new functionaries. God is bringing new oppression of His Spirit. This is a transition phase, and discernment becomes our greatest asset. If we lack discernment, we will not know what to do, and we will not be relevant with God. It's possible for a generation to be lost. The people of Israel have grown over the years. They had seen the ways of God. They had understood how God does things. But they know how God visits in January. They know how God visits in June. They know how God visits in December. They had all their arrays of activities going for them. But what they did not understand was that the Messiah that the Lord brought about, the Messiah that the prophets captured, was about to come. But they had no understanding. Meanwhile, in the demonic realm, they had known that the appearing of the Messiah was predicated upon the voice of the prophetic. So Satan invented the landscape and everyone that was supposed to be a prophetic voice, the prince in the spirit called Jezebel, that woman that corrupted the prophetic had taken over the realm and there was no prophetic voice for 400 years. The Sanhedrin was there. The Pharisees were there. The Sadducees were there. The scribes were there. The tabernacle was there. The worship was going on as usual. But what God was looking for was the voice of a prophet. The church did not discern. 400 years of darkness until God himself had to send a cherub from the heights of Zion. And he invented the service. Zacharias was carrying on the normal routine and the angel invaded and intercepted him. This is not a time for religion. Something is about to come to the angel. How come you are not aware? The guy was standing in the Holy of Holies, yet he was not aware. An angel had to come from the very heights of Zion and interrupted the service. He said, God wants to raise a voice. What will not designed for 400 years, God needed to send an angel from heaven. Zacharias, who was the high priest, who was the custodian of the laws of Moses, who understood the ways of God, even when the angel spoke, he could not believe. What had happened to the discernment of a priest in that order? The Bible said Zacharias was a priest in the order of Abia. The man studied the Torah. From the age of 12, he could recite the Torah. He knew about the law. He knew about the prophet. How come he could not understand? Even when an angel came from heaven, he was arguing with the angel. In order for him not to become a limitation, the angel had to strike him with darkness. Because in that generation, for the fact that his discernment was faulty, he doesn't have a voice. So in a generation where God is transiting, stature and ranking among men, institutional position doesn't matter. Only men who can come to Zion have a voice. This is why when God wants to raise a new generation, new voices arise. Jeremiah, Zacharias, how come you could not understand? A cherub of glory stood before you and is bringing you a counsel from heaven that you were supposed to discern by your fellowship. You could not. An angel came from heaven, yet you don't discern. This is why when God is talking revival, when God is talking poaching, our camp is still in the prosperity camp. We are still telling people to give money and be blessed. When God is talking poaching, many people in the church are locked down by masturbation, locked down by immorality. Our children, sons and daughters, who are supposed to be prophets and prophetesses, they are dressing naked every day and they have become show theaters for the dimensions of ages. And we are talking prosperity, yet God is moving. And the church cannot discern. And God does. The church cannot discern. That was the crisis of that generation.
restoration. Until Jesus came, they could not even discern the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. Yet they read it in the Bible. They taught it to their children. But when John showed up, they wanted to stop John. Who are you? John said, I am the voice of the one crying in the wilderness. They said, shut up. How come you could not discern that voice? You could not discern the season. The voice appeared. You could not discern the voice. They wanted to shut the guy up. Until the Messiah himself showed up. They didn't know him. They said to him, We know the council of the Sanhedrin. We that are supposed to be a custodian of the heritage of God. We know. What do you know? I thought you would say we know you are the Messiah. The guy said we know that thou art a teacher come from God. Because no one can do the things that thou doest except God was with him. He thought God's camp was still pitched in the old times. He didn't know that God had migrated. Even the Messiah that he spoke about, the prophecy he read, when the prophecy manifested, he couldn't recognize because the sermon was lost. The sermon was lost. The sermon had been replaced by appetites. These men were only interested in title. They were only interested in honor. They were only interested in dignity. They were only interested in money. So when God knew, they would not find him. Not Jesus. And all he could call him was a teacher. How can you stand before the Messiah and you are a priest and you don't recognize him? Because the sermon is gone. And I told you for a generation like that, the whole generation can be lost unless God bends a new dimension. You will be amazed that in the whole of that generation, only three people profited. Only three people. And you are wondering, how come a generation of millions, only three profited? John, who was the voice of the one crying in the wilderness, Jesus came and said, of all men born of women, there is no one that's greater than John. Because he discerned the Messiah. The second was Simeon the prophet. He knew that the city had come. So when others were running, looking for titles, the guy bound himself in prayer. And God came to him and promised him that you will not see death until you see the coming salvation of Israel. And Enas the prophetess, her husband had died. She was supposed to be troubled by the crisis of life. But the Bible said day and night she fasted and prayed. Only three people in the generation knew that something was happening. Only three people in the generation knew that God had migrated because this discernment is the most scarce commodity in the day of transition. And only those three were rewarded by God. I tell you that we are in a transition phase. God is about to build an army and we must not allow ourselves to be obliterated from the move of the Spirit. This is why we cry. So that many that are ease in Zion will wake up. He said, blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound an alarm upon my holy mountain. The voices that rise is now, they carry a different tenor. Because God is saying something from heaven. In a time for the move of God to hit our landscape. But how many of us are ready to carry the ark of God upon our shoulders? How many of us are ready? If God shows up today, are you ready to bear the ark of his glory? We will not be relevant, no matter the size of our church, no matter the rank we have among men, we will not be relevant because the move of God is what determines the ranking of the system. Where are you standing? What can you carry? What can be committed to you? What do you know God is doing? Many lack the Sabbath in a day like this. That is why young men who are called of God, who should weep and walk down to the horns of the altar, they think it's about form. They are living for pleasure. Everything is about Facebook because you don't know that a move is coming and the hand of God Himself will ordain the ones that will stand to bear that act. Young women that God is appearing to, giving bodies, giving covenants, all they have to offer their world is their bodies. Even around naked, because all they have is their bodies. We are not discerned that the move of God is coming from a landscape. What do you have to offer? What is your wealth? What is your readiness for what God is bringing? A voice must speak to your spirit. What is your priority in a day like this? Are you like the Pharisees that is only interested in honor in the high places in the synagogue and is not aware of what God is doing? A 
generation is about to rise. A generation is about to rise. A man who cannot hear is already cursed. He may not be aware, but he has already lost relevance in this world and in the world to come. Because the move of God comes upon our land. What is the move of God? Last night we saw how to maximize the move of God. We saw that the move of God begins with an encounter. And then it proceeds to separation. Then it proceeds to yieldedness to the government of the Holy Ghost. Then it lands us into influence and power where we can move the hand of God. But what is the move of God? What is it that God wants to do in this world that makes him so, so rich in his dealing with mankind all of a sudden? Why has he become a crime for what was tolerated before? Not to be tolerated anymore. What is the move of God? Hebrews chapter 11 verse 32. Is that time will tell me to speak of Gideon, to speak of Barak, to speak of Samson, to speak of Jephthah, to speak of David, to speak of Samuel and the prophets. And then he began to give us a lexicon of what the move of God is. He said, who through faith subdued kingdoms? The move of God is a rise of the spirit that shuts down kingdoms. Who to faith not righteousness? Who to faith obtain promises? Who to faith shut the mouths of lions? Watch the violence of fire. Men weak, but were made strong and valiant. Is a man that put to fight the armies of the enemy. The move of God is an avalanche of the spirit that hit the landscape to challenge the status quo. The move of God is an avalanche of his spirit that hits the church and carries the church to the next place of God's dealing. A move of God is what puts the foundation of darkness. A move of God is what wrought righteousness amongst God's people. A move of God is what grants people empowerment to challenge darkness, to shut the mouth of lions. Do you know what a kingdom is at all? You don't know why God is so interested in touching before the move of God begins. Because what we are contending with is not natural. You may look at the ladies dressing naked on your campus and you think it's fashion. You think it's civilization. Everything you call a civilization is the manifestation of a prince in darkness. Israel were enslaved in Egypt. They thought it was about Pharaoh. They thought it was about the dominion of the king of Egypt. They thought their battle was with Pharaoh. But the God spoke to Moses. And in Exodus chapter 12 verse 12, he said, Tonight I will come to Egypt and I will draw the gods of Egypt. So everything that Pharaoh was doing, he was only a puppet in the hands of that Leviathan that dwells in the sea. And we taught the gods of Egypt. They were held down in Babylon. Israel lost the heart of their essence. They became people that could easily be enslaved. People that could use gimmicks to succeed. They began to live after the way of the Babylonians. Until Daniel discerned that the time of visitation had come. And he thought it was about Nebuchadnezzar. He thought it was about Bethesda. Until he went down to pray. And God began to open his eyes. And he saw that they were enslaved in Babylon. Not by the king, but by the prince of Persia. And he said, when the prince of Persia is gone, the prince of Christia will come. The people that are in bondage, even themselves, will not be aware that they are under a new government. 
This is what is going on in your campus. You don't know why water is a free act in the regions of Potakot. You dwell in the midst of water. You don't know the priestess that rules over this land. You cannot do what God wants you to do in the next generation. You cannot touch what God wants you to perceive unless a move of God begins that dethrones that goddess in the belly of the water. You will think it's about talking to the gear. The gear is not naked because she's loose. She's under a government. The gear is not in water because she's loose. She came to this campus a virgin. What happened at 200 level? She was dispowered. At 300 level, she has become a god addict. She was not like that. She came under a government. She didn't know that there is a throne that rules the borders of this region. She thought this was a, an academic girl. What she did not understand is that there is a kingdom in this realm. So she came under this kingdom without education. She thought all she came from was to back your degree. Where is the lecturer that taught her how to dress naked? Where is the lecturer that taught her how to lose her virginity? Where is the lecturer that taught her about clubbing? She is not aware that there is a government. She came under a new radar, but she was not taught. So Paul said, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Put on the whole armor of God. Where we do be able to resist in the days of battle. Where we do be able to resist the vibes of the devil. He's speaking about the methods. He's called methodica. He's speaking about the strategy. He's speaking about the intelligence of the demonic realm. He said, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. But against principalities and powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in the heavenly place. Who is the principality? You don't know what a kingdom is. What you call a school is a government. What you call a school is a market of spirits. You came here as a puppet, and every time you enter a territory, a spirit was ruled over you. Either it's the Holy Ghost, or it's the God of commerce. Or is the God of immorality? Or is the God of wickedness? Or is the God of fear? Spirits rule this world. Who is a principality? The word principality is an ancient English. It means a prince without a territory. It doesn't just mean first in rank. It means a prince, equality, without a territory. So when the principality enters a territory, all it's interested in is dominion. It looks for territories to take over. Because what it lacks is a territory. A principality is not a demon. A demon doesn't have body, he's looking for men to possess. But when a principality enters the territory, it's a falling angel. He's not looking for a body to possess, he's looking for a territory where he can enact his government. So you came under an atmosphere that is ruled by a principality. You are not aware. You think exposing your cleavage is fashion. You didn't know that that's the energy flowing from the womb of a spirit. You think slipping your skirt onto your lap show is a fashion. You don't know that that's an intelligence of the demon. You think dressing naked is a fashion. You don't know that you are under a government. But when the move of God comes, it shatters kingdom. When the Bible speaks about shattering kingdom, these are the things to stop it. In their doors, a man rose up and he spoke. He said, Philip went to Samaria. He preached Christ there. That city was full of joy. You will think Philip came by English language. What he came to do was to distort the prince in the atmosphere. And suddenly, the girl that was a harlot, she looks at herself and he said, Why am I like this? Why am I clubbing? Why am I sleeping around? You will say she came back to her senses. No, a government has been destroyed. That's not you are suddenly the kingdom and it's not repenting. Suddenly, a government is destroyed. And she went up in the morning. She feels like praying. She feels like fasting. She wants to be part of the fellowship because you don't know what the move of God is. The move of God is not people falling under their authority. Yes. That's too mundane. That's too petty. When the move of God comes, it challenges pieces in darkness. This is why we press into God so that we can have a voice that can resonate in the spirit. Realm. We have no advantage if all that work for us are men. But when men that carry the move of God speak, the princes in the territory, they run away. The guy said, Paul, we know. Jesus, we know. Who are that? This is not English language. This is talking into the spirit realm until the thrones of darkness are moved away. When Daniel began to engage heaven, the angel came and said, him, He said, The prince of Persia will go, and then the prince of Grecia will come. His intercession was sufficient to drive the prince of Persia away. The move of God. The man who took faith 
subdued kingdoms. Once upon a time, the crisis of the church was poverty. Men rose. And they fought that God of poverty. And they opened the heavens. And the church became prosperous. Once upon a time, the crisis of the church was sin and iniquity. So men rose. Men in the ranks of Topio F. Kubuhi. They stood up in their generation. They cried. And all of a sudden, a new wave came upon the landscape. It was in these days when it shined like the brightness of the heaven. You could give job to deeper lifers. When they needed to bomb, when they needed to trust people with money, they said, are you a deeper lifer? Because they don't care whether you are educated or not. They know that the spirit of holiness has a government upon your soul. Because a man found that chamber in the spirit, the move of God. A time came when the church was troubled and perfected with sickness. The holiness movement began. But now, brothers and sisters, darkness is cleaving to the souls of men. God comes again as a righteous spirit. God comes to our brothers as a righteous spirit. And any man that discerns, we know that his soul must come under the government of God. You are not prosperous in this day unless your soul is prosperous. If your soul is not converted to the government of heaven, what you have in your hand is the reason why you become a citizen of the Prince of Commerce. If your soul is not under the government of heaven, that opportunity you have is the reason why you become a harlot. That's the reason why your prophetic oil will be corrupt. Until your soul comes under the government of the Holy Spirit, you cannot be counted in the days of God. The move of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. He was here on the throne. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb. Glory to the Father. He was seated on the throne. The move of God. Men who through faith shatter the foundation of kingdoms. Men with the princess of immorality fall in your territory. Then the move of God has started. When will the God of commerce fall? Then the move of God has started. Else what we call a church will reduce to a social gathering. Most of the relationships that are dissolved in this flowering, they begin from the churches. That's why the ladies wear their best wear to church. That's why the guys wear their best wear to church. It's a ground of fraternity. Because the church can become a meeting point, a social gathering, because men have not risen to bring their soul under the government of heaven. When the move of God comes, the souls of men comes under the government of the Holy Spirit. So he carries us into another layer of reality. Righteousness will be wrought in our lands. Peter stood up upon the release of the Holy Ghost and he gave a narrative of Jesus. He never spoke about sin, but they heard him. They said, Men and brethren, what shall we do to be saved? The move of God. A tax collector can become an apostle, a harlot can become a prophetess, a killer can become a leader in the house of God because a move of God has come. The prince that rule over his soul is arrested from the height of the heavens. Why will Pharaoh let it go? Because God said, Tonight I will come down and judge the cause of Egypt. The move of the Spirit. All our life depends on because even the inspiration in the territory is corrupt. The inspiration, everything we ever believed, has become a system of trading in the God of commerce. How not 
things like offering, seed sowing, have now become a tool of making people of their heart and mind. Institutions that God put in place to bless, bless His people. I was just on Facebook a while ago, on YouTube a while ago with my friend. He drew my attention to the statement that our dear father, when he made on earth, about prosperity. How that prosperity has somehow been abused because it has been taken to the extreme. Now, this is not a bit to talk about it because I don't have the stature to talk about things that are at the level of fathers. But what mattered me was the way everybody rose up trying to fight and to make a statement against what he said. Because they know that what he has said will stop them from milking the church. Every extreme preacher knows that that doctrine that he was manipulating has ended. All of a sudden, everybody, the media has gone agog because somebody said prosperity has been taken to the extreme. And phenomenon of God fighting because they know if that truth is accepted, then many preachers will go bankrupt. No wonder Jesus spoke about the Pharisees. He said, You can't enter the kingdom and you stop others from entering. How do we challenge darkness when we, are, we ourselves are agents of immorality? The guy who is the prayer is a slave of pride. He doesn't know that it's the system of the God of this world. The lady who is the head choir, the choir mistress, is an agent of immorality. And we come to church because we sing songs that are deep to our soul. And people are crying. We think there's a move of God. Those are not the parameters to look at. Those are not the indicators to check. When the move of God comes, he said the foundations of kingdoms will be shattered. Righteousness will be wrought. The mouth of lions will be shot. The armies of the aliens will be put to flight. And weak men will be made valiant in fight, in battle. We are young generation. You must refuse to become a puppet in the hand of darkness. You must fight every lust that has creeped itself to the chambers of your soul. So that you are not a slave. Because if you don't discern what God is doing, you will not pay the price of poverty. When they say pray, you will think prayer is still about bread and wine. When they say pray, you will think prayer is still about getting money from God. When they say pray, you will think prayer is still about getting mundane things. What you don't understand is that Zion travailed. Zion is traveling. Isaiah 66 verse 8. From verse 7 he said, Can a nation be born in one day? He said, On the Zion travail, she brought forth. The reason we pray now is not just because we need water, it's not because we need bread, it's not because we need raiment. This season, Zion is traveling. We have discerned from the heavens that there's something God wants to do because the principalities are ruling in our land. The churches have become chambers of displaying every dimension of it. You look at the club, you look at the church, you can't distinguish it anymore. But in the days of the apostles, they said no one dared join himself with them. In the days of the apostles, no one dared. The church was the signature of heaven on earth. No one dared join themselves. And even the religious devout, the Bible said that priests became obedient to the faith in womb of the spirit. Today, pastors have become counselors and psychologists managing crises of the soul that should be shot down by fire. The altars have become grounds where men are manipulated. The place that should burn with the flames that come from the throne of God. We need a move of the spirit. The same believers that number all our auditoriums they are the same believers dressing naked on the streets. The same believers that number the auditoriums, they are the same people in government and we cannot see the light of day. We need the move of the spirit. The reason we have no authority in our territories is because what we do remain in church. 
We have no power in eternity. Power to challenge darkness comes when our soul becomes aligned with the government of God. That's why Daniel alone could challenge the prince of Persia. We need the Daniels of our generation to rise. The Mordecai of our generation, the Deborahs, the Esthers need to rise. Let us stand as lampstand in territories. If our territory remains dark, then our Christianity has no stature in the spirit. The move of the spirit. This is why the move of the spirit is also called the move of prayer. Because every time the church wants to migrate to another realm, the church must travel. And when the devil is aware, then he begins to fight the things that should make us. Have you gone for worship concerts in recent times? They sell tickets, but the stadiums are filled. When was the last time you checked the prayer conference? When was the last time you visited the vigil? The devil knows the key for activating the move of the spirit is the travail of the believer. That's what he fights. Go for a music concert and this field will be packed. Go for a prayer meeting. I assure you, you will not hit it. The move of the spirit is the move of prayer. On desire and travail, she brought forth. We were dancing here a while ago. You saw the way this prompt was lit up. In few minutes we will pray. And you will see the difference. What appeals to the emotion and what appeals to the spirit. Then you will see the energy that powers our reality. The one that appeals to our emotion, everybody is jumping. But nobody knows to draw from the water of the spirit. We will pray in a moment. You were mighty on your throne. Jesus showed up. 
In Luke 24, 49, he said, Tarry in Jerusalem until you are empty. The frequency we are approaching him cannot catch up with where God is going. Tarry. The key to catching up with the move of God is the prayer. The prevailing prayer that the church hits. Where the church stands in the place of prayer is what brings the church to the move of God. So prayer is the essential commodity for giving the church the empowerment to catch up with the move of God. And second, what prayer does is that prayer punches the church. It punches, it punches, it punches the church. It's possible for what God was doing last year or in the last move that was a blessing to become the cause of the church. Forty years ago, the move of prosperity came. Now the church is richer than ever, but the souls of men are leaner than ever. The real church has become the simple church. You don't travel, you have no idea what I'm telling you. Our systems have become a gathering of masturbators, a gathering of immoral people, a gathering of godless people that have no reference. But in the days of the apostles, the Bible said, Men fear the Lord. What's the difference? Prosperity was a move, but it has become an old white skin. God has moved forward. So right now you don't prosper unless your soul has first of all prospered. If all you have is material prosperity, you are in the old white skin. Prayer will need to punch you again. If not that money, we bring you under the government of the God of commerce. Money will become your pursuit because you have not understood that God has moved. Everyone that will be a partaker of what God is doing, prayer must become his lifestyle. Because prayer will not only empower him, prayer will touch him. You may ask yourself, I can't do what God is telling me to do. The problem is that prayer is not part of your constitution. None of us is able to do we only began to pray, and the more we prayed, the more we connected to the energy of Zion. The more we prayed, the more we became like God. The more we prayed, the more the anointing increased. The more we prayed, the more we became accurate. Because every morning, as we behold, we are changed. As we behold, we are changed. As we behold, we are changed. Some of us were under the government of darkness until they showed us the economy of prayer and we began to pray as men of the flesh and we prayed until a point came while I was praying in my room light appeared from the wall and the light entered into me and suddenly strength came from nowhere the loss died the anger died the arrogance died the weakness died because as I prayed something happened light appeared to me he said that Jesus prayed on the mountain. The fashion of his countenance was altered. God was migrating from the law to the cross. The only way Jesus said that there was by prayer. He prayed at transfiguration. It was not enough. He went to get somebody and he was praying until the Bible said an angel came and sent him in. And after prayer was complete, he stood up and went to the apostle. He said, let's go. Death was no longer a factor. Prayer had come. The energy of the spirit is born. In the wings of prayer, a believer who cannot pray have no strength. A believer who cannot pray have no part in the move of God. Slavonic prayer on desire, travel on desire, travel on desire, travel. If you want a church to stop being a social environment, then introduce the equation of prayer. If you want a youth to become righteous, introduce the equation of prayer. If you want a youth to become God fearing, introduce the equation of prayer. Only there can we ascend to the mountains of Zion, where the spirit of just man is made perfect. I don't want to be a preacher. I want to be a man of prayer. If I'm a man of prayer, every time I preach, heaven will appear. If I'm a man of prayer, every time I preach, God will appear. We have too many preachers that are not praying. That's why the man is preaching righteousness. The people are still immoral. The man is preaching 
righteousness. The people are still sinners. The Lord's prayer is not there. Jesus said, for their sakes, I sanctify myself so that they too might be sanctified. If prayer investment is not on the altar, there can be no move of the spirit. Can I tell you, the lady going to go up every Friday, she's tired. She's tired, but no one can help her. She's crying every time she has sex. No one can help her. A guy is masturbating. He's tired. No one can help him. Because there are no men of prayer. In the days of Elijah, he came to the mountains and he said to them, either you choose God or you choose God. And in one day, Israel was born. Peter showed up from the altar of prayer. He spoke and the Bible said their hearts were pleased. They said, men of prayer. What shall we do to be saved? The guy is not immoral because she wants to be immoral. There's no man of prayer talking to him. Where will the fire go? It is why God clothes men with fire. When we stay on the altar of prayer, something happens. The great one releases fire. And so when we speak, we speak fire. When we hold our voices, we speak fire. The guy hears you. He has a plan to go around that night, but he encounters fire. The lady wanted to go to the party. She encounters fire because you stayed. You stayed until the Holy Ghost met you. A flame of fire. He said he made his angel of spirit. But his ministers are flame of fire. Until ministers become a flame of fire, there will be no move of God. This is why we pray. Be perfect in spirit. Study the law. You are not on fire. You are not blessed in service. Thank God my place is being fire. In the year that King Josiah died, I saw the Lord and he saw the seraphims. They brought a coal of fire. They put on his tongue and the guy became a prophet. A prophet that could move the hand of God. He said, Dali Jerusalem, what you are you with power? When power came, the signature of power was a cause of fire. Only men of fire can bend the move of the spirit. Fire! Fire! If we don't pass by prayer, we will be passed by judgment. When God transit, there are locations of transition. There's a place called Catespania. Catespania. A man who has not allowed God to put in my prayer. God will put in by judgment. He said to Moses, bring Aaron. When they came to the mountains of Paul, he said, bring Aaron up. Bring him up with his son and the other. Take up his garment and have to make an example of him. He said, on that mountain, Aaron be gathered to his people. Why? Because he said, Aaron, Aaron, let Pharaoh against my wall by the waters of Meribah. A man that does not align with the works of the Spirit, when he gets to Cathedral Spania, he will fall at the places. When he gets to Cathedral Spania, when he gets to Cathedral Spania, Cathedral Spania, where the places fall, Cathedral Spania, where the men of God are trapped. The revival is not without transition, but men must be called. That's why the Bible is a move of prayer. It's a move of prayer. Jezebel is moving about in our fathers, looking for the prophets that he may corrupt their eyes in the spirit. So they have been passed by immorality. Jezebel is hunting for the devourers. Women that can command the constellation. The Bible said in the days of the Bible, she defeated Barak because the stars fought from their constellation. Women that can move the heart of the heavens. They are among us, but Jezebel, Jezebel, she's talking to them. 
are three things God wants to do now. There are three things God wants to do now. The first thing God is doing is to set men on fire so that they are ordinations. May the devil speak.
and we scatter. Let's come say together. It shall come to know. Speak the word. It shall not stand. For our call is in our midst. He can't stop what God wants to do. Can you go ahead and declare? I'm blasting the tongue for one minute. I say one minute. Thank you. 
universe. He has two strange men that God wants to anoint. One of you is a prophetic evangelist. The other is a prophetic teacher. Listen to what will happen. The fire of God will come upon the prophetic evangelist. He will not be, he will not be able to hold himself. If he can catch that fire. And the guy who is a prophetic teacher will have to open for him now. And he will have an open vision. this video make sure that you click on the share button and share to a friend and also make sure that you like the video so that YouTube can recommend this video to other people so that they can also be blessed by the message if you have any question 
please make sure that you contact us and we'll get back to you. And also, if you are watching this video and you don't know Jesus Christ, ask the Lord and personal Savior. I want you to make that decision. Just contact us in the description. Call us and let us lead you to receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. And lastly, make sure that you subscribe to the channel and turn on the, that notification bell icon. Turn it on so that when new videos are uploaded, you can be notified. Thank you so much and see you in our next video and prayer section. Bye.